right, hello, you lovely people. I bet you never hello. expected to find us here at Drinker and Mauler once again. Here for here we are to answer some questions. Yeah, you have pressing questions about life, the universe, and everything, uh, and hopefully we'll answer them to your satisfaction. So, mm. yes, welcome to another Last Orders, and I guess we'll just fire straight into the super chats because we had a bunch of them to get through from the other night. So, the first one here is from Northern English Bastard says, "Oh no, Neil Druckmann is quitting. So sad." Anyway. So I think this must be a reference to like a statement he put out recently saying he thinks he's only got one more big game in him, uh, then he might be done with the video game industry. And I just thought, wow, gamers everywhere probably breathe a sigh of relief at that. Yeah, that's not really a concern. It's like, okay, see you, man. I think, I think realistically it's going to be Last of Us Part 3, isn't it? Uh, you can tell he just wants to finish that. And I think um, Ellie just needs to evolve into her ultimate girl boss form. So... so I'd be curious on how much money that's going to make. That that's totally a like Star Wars situation, you know. Last of Us Part Two being TLJ, and then this will be Rise of Skywalker, I guess. Guess that makes him JJ Abrams. So. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck, sir. Yeah, uh, I do remember that comment from you the like the other night on Open Bar. Like, what is wrong with JJ Abrams? <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> it's a valid question, I would say. Intelligent Crayon Eater says, have you seen Reaper's video on uh, TD Night Country, uh, True Detective? Just when I thought nothing could be dumber than the Halo show, Hollywood find a way. Surprise, Disparu hasn't reviewed it. It's his type of bad show. Yes, I did watch his review. It was fantastic. Um, Reaper is really funny, and he's able to balance that with some good analytical um, breakdowns of plot and structure. And he's you know. Yeah, did a really good job with Night Country. It sounds genuinely next level retarded and i'm really glad i didn't watch it noting the old liver puddly and accent have you watched any of the gentleman tv show no because i started shogun and i'm trying to get through that i'm trying to get caught up on that at your urging so um as was messaging me yesterday actually saying you need to watch the gentleman it's amazing well so, yeah i'll say this you'll probably like the gentleman more than shogun uh they're both excellent, though. I, I've seen the first two episodes of The Gentleman, and I'm quite comfortable, you know? I'm like, yeah. oh, this is fun and dramatic. And, yeah, it's just the Guy Ritchie formula. We're all familiar with it. Um, I'm just, I'm really pleased and happy and surprised that we've got two good TV shows on at the same time. Who yeah. knew? Who knew we Who could knew? have this? I didn't expect this one to be, I thought it was going to be, like, eh, to, at best, but uh, I was a little bit surprised in a happy way. So I like The Gentleman film as well. Yeah. I don't know if you've seen uh, that, have you? Um, why do I feel like I've... No, I don't think I have seen that one, actually. I need mm. to. Uh, is it a continuation, or is it just you know like a TV spin-off? So, this something? is a weird thing. I try to find out, and all I can gather is that it might be a different continuity, same concept. Okay. Which I, I, was, no, I was certain cool. it would be like a prequel or something, but I couldn't find any. Like a couple people asked, like, "Is this prequel? Is this prequel?" And, and the answer just seems to be no. It is not necessarily connected. But I'll have to look more into it because I was I was sure it was going to be a prequel. Hmm. I must admit as well, like Shogun, I am really surprised that something good is being made on Disney Plus. Like again, who knew? Oh, well, I'm not 100 percent sure who's behind the whole thing, right? Because like you know, rights are these days. There's some good stuff on Disney Plus because of just the way they eat IPs. Well, all the Fox stuff got migrated over, and so you can watch Predator and stuff on that. <laughs> that makes me happy. Yeah, poor, uh, poor Buffy is trapped on Disney+. Plus. <laughs> <laughs> no, let me out. <laughs> uh, Kevbot says, Hail panel, I'll be turning 40 this weekend. What are some of your favorite movies and shows from 1984? Cheers. So it was 84 when Ghostbusters came out. I think it is. Well, if that is, then yes. <laughs> Uh, let me just check. The biggest movies of 1984. Let's see what came out that year. Oh, The Terminator. Bang. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, that was okay. That, that, was turned, okay. Out be a, that did, <laughs> turned out to be a reasonable movie. Uh, oh, Temple of the, Doom, Beverly Hills Cop. Shit. Yeah. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Missing in action with Chuck Norris. Now we're talking. Mm. Uh, Friday oh, the Bounty. Oh Which yeah, I saw this like six months ago or so. Yeah, Anthony Hopkins. Um, Search for Spock. That's that came out in eighty four. Ah. Uh, yes, actually, slight tangent. But speaking of Anthony Hopkins movies, I just watched The World's Fastest Indian, uh, and he is lovely in it. 
Um, I, I like that movie. That is a proper feel good movie. Um, I think it was 2005 that was made based on a true story, actually. Mm. And yeah, it's it's very good. I would like it. I would recommend it. Sorry. Yeah, he's definitely one of them actors. Like <laughs> harvest him now. We've not got <laughs> long. <laughs> Can we clone him somehow? Um, Darth Soldier says, Hey, drinker, you magnificent bastard. I would like to recommend the indie film Imaginarium by Nightwish. It was made to promote the band's album, but the film tackles quite a few hard topics from dementia to childhood trauma. Okay, mm. thanks for the recommendation. Cordelia Conkers for Super Chat. Welcome. Says, I have brain surgery next week, removing a 15 millimeter cyst. We'll be catching up with all your stuff when I get released from hospital. Well, thank you very much. And I hope the surgery goes well. I hope you make a full recovery, and uh, please do update us on your condition. Uh, I want to know you got through it okay. Uh, best of luck. Best of luck to you. Um, gosh, it's always... I don't know what the right word is, but it, it just like really um, brings you down to reality when you hear things like that. Oh, yeah. You know, like Because we do get it sometimes on Open Bar, and I'm sure other people do when they live stream as well, like people who are going through some really major stuff in real life, and... Gosh, you just uh, all you can really do is wish them well, you know, and hope for the best with them. But you know, we um, uh, the, the, we had someone who in a super chat had told us they were heading to, I think it was Air Force training, and they said they'd be back in three months. Uh, we did the catch up for that. We record them offline and put them up. We did the catch up for it. it haven't gone up yet, and the EFAP on the following like day or whatever, the person had set a super chat saying, "I'm back." <laughs> <laughs> we're, like, we're like, don't worry, the super chat catch up's coming out soon, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, I thought I was bad sometimes doing catch ups. Oh, um, EFAP's just like machine gunning out videos these days, but uh, yes, we're getting to them, absolutely. I mean, when you do one of your 24 hour streams, I cannot fathom the amount of super chats you must have to get through afterwards. Well, not just that, but sometimes someone will be like, hey, what's your favorite cat? And it'll be like two hours later, All right? Next one. <laughs> <laughs> you can just imagine that person at home like, oh yeah, I nailed it with that super <laughs> chat. Because <laughs> I'll say like, I don't know, how's cat? And then Frigga will be like, right, let me just pull up the list. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ethan Rackham says, Moller, do you think any of your future videos will be able to get more views than your Rise of Skywalker uh, video uh, panel? It's okay to call him out if his answer is wrong. So I, I mm -hmm. guess Rise of Skywalker, is that your biggest one ever? On, are they talking about EFAP? Uh, specifically for you, so I assume maybe it's an unbridled rage. Well, they said video. panel. Um, I think what they mean there is uh, panel, it's okay to call him out if his answer's wrong. Oh, right, okay. Well, um, I mean, I think if they were to make a Ray movie and I do a video on that, there's a good chance that could become the newest. Like, you know, people love me covering Star Wars. I don't know yeah. what it is exactly. Uh, you guys like me covering Marvel, and then you like me covering other things, and then you know some stuff we just like you don't care at all, which is okay. But there's when it comes to Star Wars, I feel like uh, you never know what's going to happen because I don't know. Me and Star Wars are made for each other when it comes to me being angry. I think as well, it's it's almost like your nursery in YouTube land because that's really how you made your mark, isn't it? By doing your TLJ videos, and it just snowballed from there. So I guess people yeah. always see Star Wars as your home turf. Yeah, like they know they'll like that video. Yeah. Uh, Andrew McCarty says, Star Wars, ESB, uh, Return of the Jedi, all brilliant movies, even with the flaws of Return of the Jedi, I would say that it's my favorite Star Wars movie, though it's stupid that man-eating teddy bears have replaced Wookiees. We should get a Wookiee cut of Return of the Jedi. I think, yeah, I mean, could you imagine how much better that film would have been if it was Wookiees oh, instead yeah. of Ewoks? Like, God damn it. Bloody you wonder, too, from a marketing standpoint, if it would have been better as well, because... <laughs> As much as you can create cuddly teddy bit stuff, it's like people thought Wookiees were badass. Yeah. No yeah I mean, you got it looked cool, yeah. Um have you ever seen that picture like what Chewbacca would look like if he was hairless? <laughs> it is terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Timmy 04 says best movie you went to see at the movies when you were growing up. Um hmm. for me, probably the original Jurassic Park. Uh, I remember just being absolutely entranced by that and blown away. And I think I went and saw it two more times during its run, which was unheard of for me back in the day. But I just liked it that much. I became like a little bit obsessive. Um, it's got to be Lord of the Rings biggest. for me, I think. Yeah, that's fair. Especially the, the power on. 
Gandalf <laughs> on the Balrog, I remember being like, Jesus Christ, this is amazing. <laughs> uh, Psychic Scuba Diver says, I know you must get an insane amount of recommendations, so I won't give you one. Instead, what movie or show would you and the panel recommend for a guy that's into fantasy literature, aside from Lord of the Rings? Hmm. Whew, it's a bit thin on the ground, really, isn't it, for fantasy? I mean... You know, the obvious one would be Game of Thrones, but I feel like I don't need to say that. Um, I'm trying to Wheel think of the TV reason. show, maybe Wheel of Time TV show, Witcher you can't, TV show. You can't, you can't Rings watch Wheel of Power anymore. TV show. Yeah, <laughs> there's so been lots of attempts. Uh, I always had a soft spot for a crawl back in the day. That was proper 1980s fantasy cheese. Um, Did you see Legend? Yeah, that movie's um, kind of crazy. I feel like that's something you'd never get these days. It was was it Ridley Scott who directed that? It was indeed. Yeah, that was a weird choice because oh, you I know what? Like he... Damsels just come out. You know that one? Yeah, you you posted a tweet about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think we should get together for an EFAP movies on that one. I think I think that could be good. Yeah, uh, Millie Bobby <laughs> Brown, isn't it? God, that's yeah. a princess who saves herself. Oh my God, what an innovative Whoa, that's idea, nuts, man! Yeah. Uh, filthy casual. Have any of you watched the Netflix Korean revenge shows, The Glory or My Name? Uh, the Glory was my favorite show of 2023. Both are great. No, I haven't. And color me intrigued, actually. So, The Glory and My Name. I've I've heard of My Name before. Um, other people have recommended that. But is it, is it as has recommended that? For some reason, I'm thinking of as when you say My Name. Maybe you might have said something about it. Yeah. But yeah, always on the lookout for a, a good Korean show. Uh, T1S says, Jam a man of fortune and Jay yeah. must find my fortune. Baldo Baggins. Okay. That's the, that's, that's the, you know, I am a man of fortune. The quote. Uh -huh. uh, when it was read by XQC, he said, Jam a man of fortune because he, <laughs> he okay. read it wrong. It's, uh, it's one of the funniest clips you'll ever see. Uh, <laughs> Thrillhouse says, Mauler, I appreciate everything you do. Cheers, all. Thank you. We all appreciate Mauler here. Uh, As his wonky eyebrow says, it's act ma'am. As was right, hail to the panel and chat. <laughs> I agree. Uh, Charles Hurst says, they started on time. The end of days is upon us. I know, it's crazy. Need <laughs> uh, Hogur says, uh, hello, Drinker and Mauler. I'm once again here to recommend you to watch Black Sails. I know that criticizing mediocre slop is your job, but I think you should take a break and watch this action adventure show. I know. Like, loads of people Wait, have We just it. said we're both watching good shows. Two good shows. Yeah. We're not just watching slurps. No. We're, we're always like happy to watch good stuff. It's just the bad stuff sometimes gets in the way. Uh, Noir says, I've literally spent two hours watching an emu hatch. Time well spent, I would say. All right, yeah. Uh, Lubor Cameo says need more Dune films so Jason Momoa has to learn how to act <laughs> don't hold your breath he wasn't in Dune 2 right no he got killed in the first one really didn't he but he comes back later because he's a clone or something is that a thing yeah um, I think the Atreides family just really like um, is it Duncan Idaho yeah that's his name mm -hmm. um, yeah and so the <laughs> <laughs> it's like they keep cloning him. Like every time one dies, they just clone a new one, and like he just becomes like their kind of pet or something. It's it's a bit weird. Hmm. The, the, the later Dune books get really weird, and oh. I hope I kind of hope they don't turn them into movies because Dune yeah. Messiah. Here we come. Messiah is okay because that just deals with like the the sort of fallout from the events of the first book. So that's okay. It's still relatively grounded in reality. It's beyond oh, that. Things go. get yeah. really weird. Um, Piston says, it'll be Women's Day tomorrow, so please be respectful to all women, as being sexist is wrong, and being wrong is for women. Drink, <laughs> <laughs> Drink her after seven days sober. <laughs> Never a truer word was spoken. Uh, yeah, did you see all this stuff going around on Twitter today, where it was like this this girl who's um, like working to help her dad build a, a fucking cabin somewhere, and she's just like this southern gal, like a, an outdoor girl, like pretty hot, young, you like, know, and uh, absolute 10 out of 10. As far yeah, as exactly. Been. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, oh, this is, uh, you know, this is not what men want. This is uh, a woman pretended to be a man. This is disgusting. Oh, my God. Fuck off. Uh, and this came from some like 
you know, thing with like a couple of pounds of makeup smeared all over her. Like, I know which one <laughs> I'd rather pick. I find it immensely attractive a woman that can not only at least somewhat take care of herself, but also build shit and be unafraid of like getting getting your hands dirty, yeah. and stuff out. You know, that's awesome. Because I know some of the comments have been like, "Oh, well, how come you, you would criticize this in in other spheres, like in movies and stuff?" And I guess my response would be, "One, this girl looks like she actually can do this stuff. She's not just some asshole who's like larping as a as a DIY expert or something. Like, this is just her life." Sorry, did everyone uh, just forget that you love Lara Croft? I know. <laughs> That's what the hell. <laughs> Some of the world... people listening to us, like <laughs> it's the world we live in. You know, that's the things we have to deal with. But yeah, like she, she actually looks like she can do this stuff, and so there's no, there's that authenticity there. She's not play acting at this, and um, yeah, man, it's, it's not like she's there pretending like, oh yeah, like guys are rubbish at this, and so I have to do it instead. You know, I have to take yeah. one from the team and build it myself. It's like no, she's just there doing her thing. What's cool Fine. about it is that's great. Uh, that struck me about the videos is that they're being shared in context that they're not even intended for. She's got nothing to prove. She's just showing you what her life is. And she's just like, we're doing this, we're doing this, we're doing this. Yeah. The one where she's she, building like a whole barn or whatever. She's explaining how things are going. She said, yes, just an update, forgot to do this one. It's like a vlog. I was like, why are we talking yeah. on this girl? <laughs> what the hell is going on? It's, uh, and ironically, like her engagement must be through the fucking roof now. <laughs> like whatever well, yeah, channel think... she's got, like they must be skyrocketing in popularity because I think the whole internet's come to her defense. Yeah, you don't. It's just cringy being like, "Oh, this this is not a woman." Did, did you see the post that said, "Like if you like this woman, you you're gay"? Essentially, <laughs> yeah. Like... And it's like her in like a tank top, like really <laughs> fit, really toned, showing a lot of skin, just really hot. Uh, sure, yeah, if that makes me gay, sign <laughs> me up. I'm gay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you better pick up my gay card. Uh, okay, uh, Piston says, oh no, sorry, we did that one. Uh, Publius says, I appreciate your reviews and discussions. In addition to being thought-provoking, you give the gift of time in helping us separate the wheat from the chaff. As I know your time is precious, I will not request a review. Thanks. See, that's the kind of person I appreciate. <laughs> not give me another recommendation to add to the, the five million others. Uh, Johnny Z says, "All hail organized chaos." <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the concept is great. Organizing your chaos, you know. Yeah, uh, but it wasn't associated with a fucking douchebag. <laughs> <laughs> Milo says, "The great innovation in gaming debate: palette swaps are fully new, definitely not Super Nintendo mechanics. Uh, but making a game about African mythology that's new, but not allowed because the programmers are white." Well, there you go. I cannot re I cannot wait until they remake Resident Evil Five because it's going to happen, and I can't wait for the storm of controversy that's going to erupt around it. Well, it, it could be the kind of controversy that we would be upset with. I, I hope they don't ruin it if they do it, because hmm. there's the Five has got a lot going for it in a lot of ways. Like, and you know, you can make it better, but you could also make it a lot worse. I have slowly revised my opinion upwards of Five over the years. Um, because I totally get where they were going with it. It's like, hey, you liked all this stuff from four? Well, we'll just do more of it. Why don't you like it? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, it's never gonna, yeah, it's never gonna top the idea of like shooting a, a missile into the face of a villain who's inside a fucking volcano. But yeah, if you if there is a co op campaign in that from launch, you want to uh, you want to play it? Yeah, yeah, sign me up. I'll play that with you. <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> Uh, the Funny Hatter says, uh, if Sweet Baby Inc. give a public and sincere apology, I think it could help their image, but I think it would physically harm them to admit that they were in the wrong and to have to take accountability. I mean, I just think they would have nothing to recommend them then if they didn't have that whole like DEI um, you know, thing behind them to, to prop up them getting hired by other companies. I just don't think anyone would bother with them. So they can't apologize at this point. Um, Chernobog says, Molar Army, rise up. Oh, yes, okay. the Molar Army. Uh, it's extremely long. Mm. Mike, Michael Whitehead says, just a side note, Demon Slayer movie released the same time as Dune 2, but is under the radar, continues where current series left off. We need to support Japanese anime when it's on the big screen. Okay. Not familiar with Demon Slayer myself. I've never watched it, so... Nor am I. Yeah. Uh, Ken Ricard says, sure, she's the chief extortion officer. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. Nathan Cassidy, 
The guy who created the SBI uh, Detected Group is currently creating a website called DEI Detected, just in case the Steam Group goes down. He's also going to expand to include other groups beyond SBI. This could be a, a straight up career for this dude. Yeah, you know, and I think he would make a lot of fucking money from it, and probably have a really positive impact on the industry. So, best of luck to him. Uh, Normie says, I know little about video games and nothing about Sweet Baby Ink, but I do know making threats to get my ideas across makes me the bad guy and that those ideas are probably not good in the first place. Yeah, I mean, it's a fairly fairly obvious point, but it probably could stand to be made again. You know, if you do have to, like, threaten people to get your point across, then it's probably not a good one. So, yeah, I agree. Um, Daily Dose says for Open Bar 100, you should have a real BBC, EFAP, Stargrift, and Open Bar crossover. It would certainly be a crossover for the ages. Also, high rags. Yeah, I mean, the room in the call at that point. <laughs> I mean, how would we do that? <laughs> like, do you just get everyone from all the different streams in here or what? I do not know. We'll have to come up with something though. Time's a ticking. That's it. We've only got, what, 14 weeks left to do it? Mm hmm. Uh, Stumpy says, Mauler, loved your EFAP on Walking with Monsters. When I saw the title, I thought it was a Leslie Headland documentary. <laughs> well, uh, loads of people were surprisingly happy with it. We didn't realize what we would do. I, I thought I was just showing them something goofy that I liked when I was younger, but there's like a whole community on uh, YouTube who love that shit. So we will get you more of it, more than likely at some point. Nice. Uh, Big Pete Bear says, The Act Man surely reveals his mask this week, eh, Mauler? Glad to see you guys are the same on camera as off, unlike The Act Man. Well, um, some of, of a, a piece of advice that some people give, and I try to as well, is don't, like, write your DMs obviously knowing the, you know, it, it could get out someday. But at the same time, find people you can trust. Um, it's great online having people that you're connected with to that degree. Unfortunately, what is not obvious and people just don't talk about because obviously they don't. A lot of relationships are business only, and so you say, for example, your favorite podcast ever. It could have two guys, one of them maybe wearing shades and one of them a gas mask. Who knows? Who have a camaraderie, a chemistry, but as soon as the stream's over, it's like, right, I'll see you next week. It's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's possible, or it could be that they spend some time offline, they watch films together, they plan to maybe meet and do different things and really enjoy each other's company and trust each other quite a bit. You get that. Sometimes you sometimes don't. Always try and find the people you can trust. It's a much better, much healthier, and much. it just feels much better to not have to worry where everything you say is going to be scrutinized forever. You can instead just be like, no, I'm talking to somebody who's a friend. Simple as that. Good um, advice. Yeah. Uh, Stybeck B says, all that noise made me want to replay Arkham series and having a great time and experience Batman the Animated Series for the first time. So, yeah, thanks. Well, if mm. something good came out of it then, so nice. Uh, Don Blackbird says, Miss Randolph has done a review of Kill the Justice League without having played the game or the Arkham series, and she likes it. EFAP that thing, Mauler, it's quite stupid. Would be a fun time roasting that. How is she, what is she reviewing <laughs> if she hasn't played it? What? I mean, it's Grace Randolph, so... A radical idea, possible. I'll give you that. Yeah, <laughs> it's just like whatever like information she's been able to piece together, I mean, plus whatever's in her imagination. If she's reviewing that. the story only, and she watched like a story, you know, supercut, then sure. But I can't, I'd be curious what if fucking... She said she, she liked it, like, alright. I mean, it, it's mainstream and it pushes DEI, so I imagine yeah, she will like it, but... Uh, yeah, well, what trip that would be actually just reviewing a game's story and nothing else. None of the mechanics, none of the, the gameplay, the weapons, the characters, nothing like that. Just just review the story as if it's a film. It's funny because I can't even pick what was more mind numbing the story or the, uh, the fucking mechanics, dude. Constantly <laughs> shooting my minigun for like 20 hours. Ugh. <laughs> uh, Stephen Lee says, Evil Mauler be like, oh, this video is only 10 minutes. Release it with another video this week. Well, I guess it's like <laughs> evil, evil Mauler would be short, I suppose. I think so, yeah, which makes sense. Yeah, yeah. uh, the Paladin Jock says banger panel with peak accent cred. Thank you. Yeah, we had some, we had some good accents in. Uh, Mark Creation Studios says, I wonder if Ackman will ever be on EFAP again. Probably not. <laughs> Fair enough. Paz Two Wheels says, Hail, if you like drinking, then may I recommend the Australian film Wake and Fright about a teacher who accidentally drinks too much in the outback. 
All right. Thank you. Uh, Eakin says, Picky baby, yeah, intentionally causing malnutrition is such a good thing. Uh, that's what the social engineering agenda is doing, gaslighting, including, um, yeah, which is this ink at the end there. Um, pretty much, yeah. It's like we've got to, you've got to force these people to consume things that they don't want. But yeah, it's your customers are not children, unfortunately. They are people who have their own willpower and their own ability to make decisions about what they spend money on. And if you don't care it. to them... They just won't buy your stuff anymore. Electron says, never underestimate your audience. They're generally sensitive, intelligent people who respond positively to quality entertainment. Stargate SG-1. Perfect. It explains a lot. Uh, Moon Dude says, hey guys, there's a trailer for the Fallout show now. Decent trailer, but I heard it may not be a good show due to the message. Uh, any thoughts? None at the moment. Um, I guess I'm kind I, of holding I'm fire. I'm not enough into Fallout to give any kind of like perspective of it of how it's doing as an adaptation, but I've heard a lot of mixed things about whether or not it's doing okay or terrible in that regard. Yeah. So we'll see, I suppose. Um I'll probably check it out. Are you gonna Yeah, I'll watch it. Yeah. Because I've played most of the games, so I like them. I like the universe. And I've got a very nice suit of like power armor from Fallout in the, the cabinet there. I suppose it's a bit too dark to see it. Um but yeah, yeah. I've got a, I've got a little Fallout shelf. Um yeah, it's a cool universe. I, I like the aesthetic of it. I like the dark sense of humor that comes with the games. And hopefully, if they can carry that over, it could be good fun. But I don't know, man. Um, Chrome Vader says, Drinker, as an aspiring author, I find your film critiques a valuable resource for learning to weave a compelling and immersive story. So thanks for keeping it real. Also love the Tomb Raider streams. <laughs> Thank you, man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Obviously, completed Tomb Raider 1, so that was great fun. It was a nice little trip down memory lane. And now I'm playing Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, and I've started streaming that. So, again, great fun. Um, that's another trip down memory lane, actually. All my all my fun times with games at the moment seem to be just nostalgia. That's what I've turned into. I'm sorry. Play some Zen Run. That's the best nostalgia game. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm going to... Uh, yeah, I'll play Helldivers 2 as well. Um, oh, yeah, that heard, shit's good. Heard enough good things about it, I'm signing up. I'm going to spread democracy at any cost. Mm -hmm. uh, Rory Swain says, Hail to Drinker and Co. Do you support football teams? Um, not massively, if I'm honest. Like, I guess Hearts would be my my best pick for like local teams because they're like, actually pretty good <laughs> as well as being close by. Um, but yeah, I'm not like... You know, a season ticket holder or anything like that. I don't know more if you've got one or if you're not into I it am, either. I was vaguely into rugby at one point, but sports ball is just absolutely not my thing at all. <laughs> um, do you ever see the Mitchell and Webb sketch about the football? <laughs> no, it's so fucking funny. I might show you it once we're done here because you'd never be able to play it for copyright. But uh, it's just it's like making fun of how <laughs> football ads go. It's just David Mitchell just walking across a pitch very aggressively while going like, the football starting tonight. Welcome to football. Football. Will we have it? <laughs> and there's this one line where he says the um, the giants of Ipswich will be fighting the titans of uh, you know something else. And he goes, making them both seem relatively normal-sized. <laughs> <laughs> Was there not a bit in the IT crowd as well that dealt with this? Like one of the guy just learns like some generic football phrases that he can apply to any conversation. Like when he's dealing yeah. with like a working class guy, and it's like, ah, oh, yeah, the problem with Arsenal is they're always trying to walk it in, and it's yeah. just like he can say that about any team, any time, you know. <laughs> uh, the big dog says the paradigm we're, you're discussing began with Occupy Wall Street. Everyone was united against billionaires, and so they began funding this nonsense. Oof. We're going deep now with this conspiracy. Um, David Lamplow says, Ellie's gay, by the way. I know, I was so pleased I was able to work that into my most recent video. It's been so long. <laughs> I've missed it. Uh, Disregard says, there's a YouTuber called Kirsch who's pretty knowledgeable about the sweet baby stuff going on uh, for a while now. Would be a good source of info to tap into for this kind of stuff. Cool. Thank you. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll keep him in mind if we're covering it again, I suppose. Um, excuse me. James Moore says, writers for the games, Arkham Asylum 2, Arkham City 3, Origins 5, Night 7, Gotham Night 14, two of them Sweet Baby, uh, Suicide Squad 26, half being Sweet Baby. 
depth of 26. 26 writers. The fuck are they doing? <laughs> it's one of them credits like I wrote a line. I mean, it, it must be at that point, yeah. I mean, I could understand like if you've got loads of side quests, like maybe you could pair yeah. off a writer to just do that particular thing. But oh, why do you coordinate all of that? Uh, Dogbert and Friends says, say car ramrod. <laughs> Wait, that's, that's from the um, fucking super troopers, isn't it? Car ramrod. <laughs> you got Rathorn and, uh, and fuck, who's the other guy? Rodney Farva. Yeah. <laughs> super troopers is a fantastic movie, and I hold it up as one of the best comedies of the 2000s. Do you see the um, sequel? Yeah. Oh. So. It was. It had moments. It had moments that made me chuckle. But man, I wish they'd done it like ten years earlier. Like mm -hmm. they were kind of showing their age by that point, and just didn't have the same magic. Um, Chris Stockman says, "Here is my review of Dune Two. Dune Two is directed by Denise Villeneuve and stars Timothy Chalamet. End of review." Well, I mean, I know that's not the real Chris Stockman because you went into far too much detail there. I was going to say, I really felt the emotion there. So, yeah, calm down. I care so much about the filmmaking process. Some bashing film by praising other films and not praising <laughs> some films. Jeez. <laughs> uh, Moller Moller, brother of the... Uh, what's the rest of it? I can't see it. Um, Mortal Kombat 1 was filled with always online seasonal crap and Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League was a complete disaster. If Warner Brothers games aren't in a panic right now, we are doomed. I think they must be, really, I, if they've had to admit that this was a flop. Unfortunately, this has been something that we've been highlighting for over a decade, probably two decades, like just how games are slowly falling to the sort of money-grubbing side of things. And what's going to happen is not a retreat back to what we all believe to be like a much better form of design for execution of monetizing your game, but instead trying to find a better way. This happened, do you remember when Battlefront 2... When it was like, in order to play as Darth fucking Vader, you'd either have to buy him with extra money or play for 700 hours. Yeah. And like players lost their shit and they were like, whoa, and it killed Battlefield's reputation to the to the point of people being frustrated because apparently it got pretty good. You know, like they fixed it up. But it was yeah. too late because that's, that was the reputation. And so what that meant was not monetization, microtransactions, everything going. It just meant they were like, all right, we need to be more subtle next time, guys. Jesus. Yeah. And that's the thing. Yeah. Um, that's the perfect world we're going to get is the there'll be stuff in games where we go, eh, that's okay, though. That's fine. And to be honest with you, there are forms of microtransactions that I'm okay with. I just, uh, good God. Games as a service is so gross. Yep. Pay to play. I mean, it's, yeah, just give people a good product that rewards skill and um, and hard work. That's it. You don't need to make more money out of it. Yeah, fuck off with this stuff. Uh, Darth Soldier says, greatest line in a movie ever. Why don't you take a big step back and literally fuck your own face? <laughs> <laughs> it was good. Uh, Tom Cruise delivered it with absolute gusto, and I love that movie. I just uh, love the, James... the shouted, 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 hags up that goes, we don't negotiate with terrorists. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And they all clap immediately. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, the first time he does it, he's like, you know, screaming at them that he's going to bring down fiery death upon them and stuff. Yeah. And like they've, they've unleashed like the, the absolute shitstorm upon themselves. And then when he hangs up, he just goes, Would you find out who they were, please? <laughs> he oh, doesn't even know who they so are. Funny. And I was, I was actually <laughs> going to say, like, if they ever announced that Tropic Thunder 2 was happening, if they didn't get Tom Cruise back, I'd be like, I feel like this is an insult. Like, Oh, Les Grossman is just the like he anchors that movie for sure. Les I mean, Grossman him and Robert Downey the... Jr. just. Oh. Well, that's the other thing, isn't it? If they made it today, be like, so Robert. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, uh... <laughs> I mean, I think if Ben Stiller was, you know, at the helm, they would they would get away with it because he's staunchly defended all the decisions they made in that movie, and he feels like the kind of guy who would just he wouldn't bow to like modern deism, and. I think if a movie like that got made and it was funny and they did stuff as controversial as the first one, that would be a sign to me that things are definitely changing. Yes. And it's so funny because the appetite is so there. Oh, yeah, there's money to be made. There is money to be made. Particularly now because there's been such a drought of genuinely funny movies that do what's considered now controversial. Man, if you did a movie like that and it was actually good, you would make 
bang. You imagine the word of mouth. People would be like, you gotta see it. You gotta fuck it. Dude, I haven't seen them this funny in forever, you know? Yeah, yeah. It'll happen eventually, because if there's enough yeah. demand there and there's enough money of, like on the table, they'll go for it. Well, the, the way it often works is like um, the demand will be there and the, when bigger markets don't take advantage of it, some indie creator might. And then yeah. what'll happen is, like, oh, God, get a sequel to that immediately. Go, 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 go. And then a big company buys up the rights and then, you know, and so on. Yeah, true. Uh, James Moore says, it's literally Gamergate 2.0. Gundam and Kirsch have talked about it. Sweet Baby has ties to news outlets, and that's why they're blaming gamers again. Yeah, it's funny how they, they're trying to recycle the same playbook, as far as I understand it. But yeah, the difference being, nobody gives a fuck what any gaming journalist websites say now. Like, they're dead. It's a dead media. And Sweet Baby um, Inc.'s uh, reputation is in the fucking gutter. Like, I don't see anybody saying there's anything worthwhile about them. No. Uh, Joe Themig says, cheers to the open bar. Who'd have thought that a decade later the ghosts of Gamergate would still haunt the hallowed halls of the internet? I know, right? <laughs> I feel like Star Sargon should be stirring himself into life again, <laughs> you know, to cover all this. Uh, I should have asked that's a, I should have asked them on, actually, for open bar last week. Fuck, You're I missed full. the trick there. I know. Right, we're doing it again. We're having a do-over, okay? <laughs> Till I get it right. <laughs> Uh, Max Matson says, "Have you seen the ninth configuration?" No, I haven't. I haven't seen the ninth configuration. Um, no, afraid not. Uh, Derek says, "We used to complain that the people who made movies and games just wanted to make money. Now I wish the people who just wanted to make money would come back and get rid of the people who just want to make activism." I know, right? I'm 100 percent in agreement. I fucking yearn for the days of Jerry Bruckheimer and Michael Bay movies. Like, oh god, yeah. those guys, those guys were fucking morons but like they at least <laughs> understood their audience and they just wanted to make popcorn movies that would make lots of money great it's, i can live with that it's a bit of a cycle like you now miss the artist who has nothing to say so to speak in terms of like they're just like i just want to look at stuff that's cool and you're like you know what i want to look at your stuff that's cool that's fine yeah with me. <laughs> one day one day right i'm going to make a video it'll be like in defense of jerry bruckheimer or something just like outlining all the reasons why i think he was a good influence somehow michael bay you know, better yeah than you thought you know hey i tell you man if i had to pick between michael bay and jj abrams or something i know who i'd pick fucking well, hell. michael bay might actually get you to laugh at the very least yeah uh, Angry Bassandri says, Hail gents, on the subject of Tomb Raider, take a look at the characters on the cover of the... Uh, what's that? TTRPG. It's a real treat. Oh, right. This is... Uh, is this not where we got like a black Lara Croft or something? Yeah, oh, I so didn't know if that was AI or not. <sighs> right, hold on. Uh, tabletop RPG. Let's see. Oh, oh, right. Okay. Is there a way I can share this so that you might see it? I don't know. All right. Hold on. Yeah. Well, they do have a Lara Croft that looks somewhat like Lara Croft. All right. Here we go. I'm going to bring it up this way. So present and. It's funny. I thought I was sharing screen the other day when we were doing open bar and I'd failed to add it to the stream so I could see it but nobody else could which was hilarious more hilarious the, I say the stream see it at least the like people watching uh no they could not and so <laughs> what I had to do was uh add it in manually later just so that like people so, would actually have a video reference or sorry a visual reference something that you you beat out for boomerism on that one with is uh I was watching FNT and Gary was showing an animated version of a conversation that happened on FNT a particularly funny one by the way and in the conversation, say there's two people fighting, like five in the background and making noises, saying things, you know, and that that's all a part of the video and it's in the animation. Gary's playing it and he thinks that the voices in the video are the voices on the panel talking over the animation. <laughs> so the video is playing, everyone's quiet, and then he just goes, can you guys shut up? Like the video is playing. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> God bless you, Gary. Yeah, so I don't know if you can see the, the, the uh, portly uh, lady on the left. So she's uh, a black positivity, uh, body positivity uh, lady with uh, missing legs. 
She's wow. got her feet. No, she's got like those springy things like Giselle from fucking Kingsman. Wow. Okay. Yeah. It's... Uh, again, feels like they're playing into the meme with that. Yeah. I mean, Lara Croft's there, so I'll give them that. Like, she is there, and she's wearing her Tomb Raider outfit. She looks a bit unhappy about it, but, you know, there's something, I guess. Anyway, that was, uh, yeah, I, I can see where the criticisms are going to come from there. But. Uh, next one is Maxim M says, and this is a five-parter, so strap in, boys. Uh, you mentioned 2001 a lot recently. Do I? Uh, I urge you to reconsider treating it as uh, good if artsy because it's not a movie. There's no plot. First half is only landscapes and crap floating in space. <laughs> I mean, that's a bit of a stretch, but okay. Then there's an attempt at a plot. Hal is great, but then abruptly it ends with utter horseshit. It's not open to interpretation. <laughs> it's unadulterated navel gazing. To quote Arthur C. Clarke, if you understand 2001 completely, we failed. We wanted to raise far more questions than we answered, i.e. they value it not making sense. That may be art, but it's not a good movie. I don't believe that's what that is meant to mean. I would rather go the direction of what you find in it is what you saw. Like, what you see is what you see. You don't... The idea that, like, all of us are supposed to come away with understanding exactly what point they were going for, as opposed to they are going for several points. There's some obvious stuff in there, I think, that we can all grasp. Like, the... Yeah. um what man's relationship to, like, the creation and uh, use of tools and stuff. But... Mm -hmm. um at the same time, there's visuals and references in there, like David Lynch stuff, where you're supposed to interpret at your will. There would have been intentionality and options in the creation of such stuff like that. But I don't feel the need to be like, oh, it doesn't count as a movie now because there's no definitive definition or understanding of every element of the film. It's like, no, I like the idea that we get to interpret somewhat and, and discuss. Yeah, and like the, the plot, there is a plot that follows a logical sequence of events. You know, it's just yeah. that there's there's elements of it, particularly towards the end, where uh, you know the resolution is open to interpretation. The, the deeper meanings of of what Bowman sees when he goes inside the monolith that's definitely open to what you want to get from it. Um, and I would say that, like, check out people's assessments of it and see if you find any of them particularly moving, you know, or or applicable, or if you find them to be nonsense. Which, by the way, I've you know some of my favorite movies when I look at people review them I'm like shut the fuck up that's not that what that what that was <laughs> like uh, who doesn't love it when they're like Thomas the Tank Engine communist propaganda <laughs> like, well it is fascinating to hear people's yeah mental gymnastics that they're able to do like uh, I watched a, an hour long video about why Event Horizon was just a giant hallucination caused by oxygen deprivation and mm. yeah okay you know there there's things to pull out of it but I don't agree with it at all but you know uh, it's fun nonetheless. Like uh, Inception also, was all a dream, you know. Yeah. Uh, Maxim also says, as a wise man once said, if you want to argue for atmosphere, films could be 10 billion years long. 2001 feels 10 billion years long because it's an objectively bad movie about nothing. Ooh. Come on, dude. Uh, shout out to a formerly great YouTube pioneer, Confused Matthew, who really drove this point home. I think you'd enjoy his old review. All right. So he's given me the link there. So I'll need to check that out I later. But uh, yeah. I don't know if we're going to enjoy a review that concludes 2001 is a waste of time. <laughs> like, I think it's a bold strategy to say that 2001 is a movie about nothing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that is... <ooh. laughs> that is, that is a reach, is sir. Uh, that I, I heard so long about Blade Runner, too, but I feel like I hear it less these days. Oh, if I hear one more, like, oh, Blade Runner 2049 was actually way better than the first one. <laughs> Kill Fuck off. <laughs> Uh, Dragon's Advocate says, with that haircut, Drinker looks like a brunette Johnny Bravo. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's not even as spiky tonight, but it was super spiky on the open bar. I just had it cut, so I was like, fuck it, I'm going vertical with this one, and nobody's going to stop me. <laughs> and nobody yeah. Did. yeah, Pootie Evans says, you don't see EA saying, oh, our picky baby customers just want another FIFA game. Why won't they let me turn FIFA 2024 into something different? Well, exactly, yeah. Um, what's it? It's uh, to the C to the E <laughs> says defending Sweet Baby Inc. is a Gamergate all over again. Somehow every website released an article on the same day saying they didn't want to be called a gamer anymore. Yeah, funny that, eh? Hmm. It's almost like they're all talking to each other behind the scenes. Um, Scotty says, strange that the CEO of Sweet Baby, who has a marketing degree, allegedly, doing everything antithetical to marketing products and destroying other companies. I know, it's almost like they don't care about any of that stuff, really. Uh, Dutch Schaefer Pussy says, that's a great name. 
fucking hell. I'm going to take a moment just to revel in that one. <laughs> uh, drinker, when you're alone and life is getting you lonely, you can always go, ugh, oh, doon to. I'll see what you did there. Uh, hello, Dave says, Hi all, Drinker, I saw in your earliest videos that you reviewed the Outlander books. Just wondered why you chose them and what uh, you make of the TV series. I don't actually know in retrospect. I think it's just because I'd read them at the time and I thought, there's things I want to say about these. Um, mainly that they make me angry with how fucking long and ridiculously self-indulgent they are. Um, but yeah, it was back in the days when I was still grappling with what I wanted to review and how I wanted to do it. But my God... Yeah, that was the era when you did the whole bit to camera thing and put skits in and stuff. Yeah, good times. And that was yeah, it was a very different era of making stuff on YouTube. <laughs> uh, it's funny to look back though. Um, Paul Murgatroyd says a word to anyone wise, at sweet baby. People on the internet with time on their hands have managed to solve murders before now. Don't think for a second that you can slide under the radar. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. Um, I've I've loved it. I, I think maybe Internet Historian did one like this where um people will post like a, a picture of a flag or something and like within a matter of like hours, like literally like, there's a camera pointing up at a flag, so you can't see the landscape around it, all you can see is the sky, and it's just like a live stream yeah. of it. Um and by triangulating the, the weather patterns and the, the trajectories of jets that were passing by, so you can see like the contrails and then projecting it against known flight plans. They were able to project the actual location of that flag within like a few hours. That's how autistically, terrifyingly powerful the internet is. Mm -hmm. So yeah, don't ever mess with them. <laughs> uh, Tobe Ornitobe says Mahler had better come to Ragnarok's defense if anyone on the panel begins to deride that game. <clears throat> I don't think anyone did, did they? No. The the the, the thing that's awkward about Ragnarok is that not many people have played it. In our sphere, that like want to talk about uh, SBI's influence on it. Like, I think outside of me and Drinker, I'm struggling to think of who has actually like played it from start to finish and who's you know at least somewhat familiar with the uh, God of War as a series. So it's like uh, similarly talking about Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League, right? Like I had played Arkham Asylum and City. I hadn't played Night and Origins, so I was like a bit out of depth on a couple of things. For example, like. Um, there are certain events and characters that are hyper contradicted. And when I was playing it, people were like, oh, fuck, they screwed that up. And I was like, oh, did they? Like, I didn't even know. But they, I, I was aware enough that how much they'd screwed up because of other things. While Ragnarok, I was like thoroughly impressed by how much we were calling upon. Have you played uh, Valhalla yet? I can't remember if you said. No, you, you definitely recommended it strongly to me. And I will get around to it. It's just, I'm... yeah, it's that weird. Like, I've had it. this real drought of stuff to, to play and watch. And now I'm swimming in it, you know? That one, they go heavy into the <clears throat> Greek stuff. And it's fucking brilliant. Um, doesn't doesn't Kratos encounter young Kratos like the Kratos from the first game? Well, and it's like I don't like to spoil anything, Drinker, but it's fucking brilliant, and loads of people love it and uh, come away from it thinking it was a great ending to the sort of Norse campaign, especially because um, in both the 2018 and the Ragnarok game, you didn't see much Greek stuff. They really reserved it. It, it was present, but it wasn't as present as one might expect because you could bank on a lot of nostalgia. Let's just say they were saving it a little bit for this DLC because uh, Helios comes back somewhat as a guest appearance as well. There's a, there's a bunch of references, but one of the big things is uh, Kratos needs to grapple with some of the decisions he made in the Greek era. And he, you know, like the, the amount of shame he feels for a lot of the decisions he made. Uh, he talks to Tyr and Mimir about them and has a newer perspective on a lot of them, which again, it's uh, it's like I, I had comments about this on the videos. It's like, man, it's like the literal opposite of let the past die. It's grab the past, remember the past, and use the past going forward. And that game is so fucking cool. So this is what I mean when like I want I'd love to talk about all these things, but a lot of people will sort of reflexively be like, SBI is attached to it. Fuck that game. It's like, uh, I mean, <laughs> I guess. yeah, hmm. it's a shame. And it really, yeah. you know, because the people who deride them and just dismiss them because of like one character who's in the game for like a grand total of 15 minutes, maybe. Um, yeah, they're missing out on a great experience. And it's a shame. And I guess I would say, trust me, <laughs> if nothing else, like if I thought this game was like woke as fuck or was pushing some crappy agenda, I would have called it out. And I didn't see it. I think it's a really solid, really solid story. The whole thing, because it's not a short game. 
No, and I had a blast doing it as well. Um, Fidel Franco says, some dumb friends said that this is like putting popular mechanics articles in vogue and they still don't get the point across. The problem is mentality. Indeed. Um, Pitland says, hello to all you fine gents. Something we all need to do is stop calling ourselves fans. We're not fans, we're paying customers and disgruntled ones at that. You guys are a consumer advocate group. Cheers uh, and God bless. Thank you, man. And uh, yeah, in a lot of ways, you are right. Like people who buy this stuff, they are customers and they have a right to be treated as such. Uh, Part of the reason I think we still call ourselves fans a lot of the time, though, is to explain to anybody who's new to all of this why we care so much beyond yeah. whether or not money is involved. Because I, I do, and I assume Drink agrees with this, there was something special and important about a lot of these franchises having died. Um, they were inspirational. They meant a lot to a lot of people. And them being gone is not fucking good. I mean, I, yeah, because we've all spent countless hours venting our anger at all this stuff and what's been done to them. It's, I, it's, 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 like, it's, it's more than the fact that it would have been something that we now know is like, oh, great, so I can't experience that over and over again with newer stuff that, that, that's that been taken. But I know now as well that new generations aren't going to be interested. Like, you know, imagine watching TLJ as your first Star Wars film. Yeah. You're like, yeah. Eh. The fuck? Imagine, like, yeah. imagine Star Trek Discovery is like your first taste of Star Trek. You're you're mm -hmm. never gonna go back to it. Yeah, it's, it is uh you you really feel the loss, I guess. You know, it's it's one thing to just make a shit movie that stands on its own. It's like, well, that was crap, move on to the next thing. But yeah, when your shit movie like destroys the legacy of an entire franchise, yeah, then I got a problem with you. <laughs> you know, there's a lot resting on you and you fumbled it. Um S Sharp says, my favorite was watching them talk about their utter lack of work ethic, identifying that as a strength of their neurodivergent creative process. <laughs> it's great, isn't it? Everything can become a strength if you spin it right, I suppose. Uh, Ken says, while the ship of Theseus uh, may be functionally the same, these development studios of Theseus uh, are entirely new beasts. Yeah, I get what you're saying there. Um, mm -hmm. Hoodie Evans says, normalized fat men playing superheroes in movies. Yeah, we're not going to see that, are we? Well, we did have David Harbour. He was like, he was a fat man. He was in Black Widow. Yeah, I mean, the film was definitely trying to be like, look how fat he is in several scenes. Not yeah. like the blob fat, but, you know. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I can't imagine a, you know, a movie where you've got a fat guy playing a superhero and he's just really competent and amazing and good. It, the fact that he's fat doesn't really factor into it. I, I don't think they would have the balls to do anything like that. Um, Andrew Moore says, Drinker, as a fine author and Expanse fan, did you ever finish off the story with the last three books? I'm nearly at the end of book nine. My God, it would have made a great telly. Um, no, I haven't read the Expanse. I just watched the TV show, so um, I don't know how the books differ or whatnot. Uh, Josh Kelsey gave us $20. Thank you. Uh, DB Wild says, years back, a game was made to mock that no matter how many thoughts and prayers were thrown at a problem, shite would still hit the fan. I want an ESG DEI simulator made the same. More message means more money losses. Someone will make it somewhere, I guarantee it. Silent Evil says, one definitely good thing I can say about the new upcoming Silent Hill 2 remake, at least Sweet Baby Inc. isn't involved. That can only be a good thing. Uh, the Master says, Sweet Baby's buy our crap attitude is the exact arrogance that drove Kane to deny God. I ordered a lamb, Kane, but I worked so hard on these crops. <laughs> okay. Um, hand shot first says drinker is it true that scottish people can't say purple burglar alarm so you try and get me with that every time and every time <laughs> i sail right through the test <clears throat> uh, e smith says regarding bo body positivity etc you're entitled to make unhealthy life choices but you're not entitled to have our choices reflected and affirmed by society or so have, sorry have your choices uh that is again very true uh it's funny because there's been a thing doing the rounds with like, all these body positivity influencers have been dying, weirdly. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, weirdly. I mean, like, yeah. like, <laughs> who would have thought that being morbidly obese was bad for your health? Uh, who could have predicted this? Yeah, probably not good for you. <clears throat> um Sinyin says, as a woman, I can confirm that seeing Harley Quinn killing Batman in cold blood did not make me feel more included. It made me feel like they are psychopaths. Yeah, I yeah, can, she I has can get behind effect. that one. Uh, 
Chimp says, as an honorary person of gay, I find pandering and virtue signaling, especially from a corporation, to be turbo cringe. Sexuality doesn't define us. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Nothing should. It was like that stupid fucking um, Doctor Who thing where they said, oh, we can't portray Davros as uh, being in a wheelchair. You know, one of the big villains of the Doctor Who lore uh, because it sends the wrong message that people being in a wheelchair makes them evil. And I just thought, you motherfuckers, that's what you took from that? That's what you took from him as a character? You just Insane. distilled them down to like his, his basic physical appearance and said that's what makes him evil? Absolute pricks. Now we got to have a wheelchair-bound character with a rocket launcher attached. That's, that's how we fix this. Oh, God. I think my thinking? spine just about cringed right <laughs> out of my body when I saw that. Can you imagine being like a, a story consultant and they present this to you? Like, imagine it was us two and they, they come into a board meeting and they're like, isn't that going to be great? Finally, <laughs> like, good representation for wheelchair users. We'd be like, <laughs> you are joking. Like, just, just sitting there like, get out. <laughs> <laughs> what, like, uh, I, I don't know. I would love to try to explain to them. It's like, you'll be a joke. You will be a fucking joke if you do this. Yeah. Uh, Gotta2319 says, can't be racist against white people, don't you know? Uh, well, if you, apparently if you work for Kotaku, then yeah. OMG Puppies says, sites like Kotaku, io9, The Verge, drew in audiences interested in games, sci-fi, and tech. Then bait and switch, they begin propagandizing the audience. Indeed, yeah. I cannot see sites like Kotaku continuing much longer. Their engagement must be in the fucking toilet. I don't even know how they keep the lights on. Yeah. Uh, Pudi Evans says the end goal for these people is that all game, movie, and media characters are 33% male, 33% female, 33% non binary, and equal parts white, black, and Asian, etc. I still think they'd ever be happy. They'd still want more. Richard Ruth says Sweet Baby will not be the last. Stay vigilant. True that. Pudi Evans, why isn't there an outcry for diversity in garbage men or miners or truck drivers or third shift jobs? I demand DEI in the crappy jobs too. Yeah, it's. It's funny how that works, isn't it? It's always the cushy office jobs that they want equal rights in. Uh, Yannan Klassen says, speaking of video games, Anita Sarkeesian got fake married. Yeah, we... I, I I had to like edit that. Again, that was where I fucked up earlier, and I didn't show the actual image that I had, but I've edited it in to the re-upload so people can see it in all its glory, and it's oh, okay. sad as fucking thing. A 40-year-old yeah. woman celebrating uh, her birthday by having a, a wedding birthday. Just I saw there oof. was some people being like, you making fun of her for having fun. Like, how sad is that? I'm just saying, like, if you can't see anything sad about what that a birthday wedding themed thing where she pretends to be married but isn't, if you can't see... And I know for a fact the people, if you saw anyone you didn't like doing that, you'd make fun of them immediately. You know what I mean? Like, it's just... Yeah. That's just... I'm sorry. That's just sad. It's sad. If it, I mean, if it was, like, literally her getting married or something, or just celebrating her birthday, I, I yeah, don't whatever. Would care. It's like, well, fine. Just do what you want. Like, have a nice life. But, like, that, it's... Yeah, the, the projection there, and the... I'm really happy, honestly. I haven't made terrible life choices, and now I'm regretting everything I've done. Like, that's... So thick and it's so obvious you can't help but see it. Um, Confucius says Dune and Mad Max multiverse. How batshit can we get? Uh, also, poor Mauler, he never knew his uncle Bob and none was assigned to him. Oh, so sorry, so that's that. reference. Not bad. Uh, Grilled Cheese Warlock says, I'm a bit behind, so maybe this has been covered, but Sweet Baby calling white gamers picky babies for not wanting or liking their product. That logic goes both ways, indeed. Uh, Garth Knight Returns says, Ellie's gay, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. Mm. Uh, the Last March of the Gents says, Blue Eye Samurai, diverse cast, strong female lead, bad white people, yet universally loved. I know, right? It's almost like it was really well written. Um, I need to get you to watch that at some point. I'll add it to your list. There's so many things. I know. <laughs> Max Gagliardo says, we should have popular IPs like Halo, Call of Duty, and Battlefield given to independent game companies. It feels like the only way to save those games. Pfft, yeah, I mean, even that's no guarantee. Hmm. Silent Evil says, great bid on the state of Disney Star Wars. Sadly, I must say the Silent Hill franchise is, is in a similar quagmire. Quantity over quality. Um, Silent Hill Ascension is a laughing stock. Silent Hill, the short message. More like Silent Hill, the woke message. Yeah, what is Silent Hill Ascension? What the fuck's that? Don't know. 
Hmm. Ethan Morganti says, A murder at the end of the world is Knives Out done correctly. Limited series on FX. Very well written and heartfelt. Please give it a shot. Love. Thank you. Um, Coco Commando says, Is Echo talking to us from heaven? What? <laughs> I thought he was in his bathroom or something. <laughs> um, Shota <laughs> says, Good ridden, Zach. Right. Snyder is out of DC. Right. Lol. Yeah. Well... He did say right quite a few times when he was doing that interview. There's still uh, people trying to push the Netflix will buy enough rights to continue the Snyderverse. Do you fucking will, imagine? Snyder will, like, he'll die an old man and his coffin will be getting lowered into the ground and people will be like, See, there's still a chance that the Snyderverse could come back. The thing about it that strikes me, and I've, I've talked about this before, it's just the imagine Warner Brothers being like, yes, James Gunn, make your own universe, your own Superman. By the way, we're continuing with Snyder's fucking thing as well. No. Yeah. <laughs> of course not. Oh, did you hear, by the way, as well, someone sent me a tweet that basically says um, Peacemaker Season 1 is in canon with the Snyderverse stuff. Peacemaker Season 2 will be in canon with the new continuity. What the fuck? I don't think I've ever seen that happen before. I was like, y y y what? <laughs> how, how can you call that season one and two? I, I honestly don't know how James Gunn expects people to wrap their heads around this. I think it it's going to be a matter of they just doing. bulldoze through. You know, just keep going and be like, whatever, fuck you. Yeah. We're keeping it. That's such an obvious example of I'm keeping the thing I like, okay? You're like, Oh, yeah, right. yeah. Absolutely. The whole of last year was just bulldozing their way through. It's like, right, we've got to get all this shit out of the way before we can get onto the stuff we want to make again. You know, just release all these movies that nobody wants. Get it out of the way. <laughs> uh, Pudi Evans says, hide your wives, hide your kids. Zack Snyder's Batman is killing everybody out here. <laughs> Indeed. Um, Hercules says, don't forget, Batman returns, Batman kills. Yeah, that's just Two-Face, isn't it? Well, no, so wait. Sorry, I'm thinking of the wrong one. I think Batman might have killed in basically every one of his movies. Even the Batman, there's a scene that people cite of him that someone probably died from something he did. And I think the it depends on who you talk to and who, who well, who's making what statement. My issue with what Zack Snez says is that it has nothing to do with his film. I saw his Batman. It has nothing to do... Like I found what he said vaguely interesting. But I don't see what the fuck he was talking about when after seeing Batman vs Superman. There is no interesting or difficult challenge for Batman in in Batman vs Superman when it comes to killing. He's killing frantically. I remember seeing the clip. I completely forgotten where he's just got the machine gun and the fucking huge guns on his his bat wing and the guns on his. It's just to everything. It's just like don't tell me the Batman is like hmm. <laughs> Shit, yeah. I have to solve this with you know difficulty. Meanwhile, like the Nolan Batman has a lot of difficult situations that involve whether or not he's going to kill someone definitively. There's a couple of ones that aren't. I'll give it to you. Uh, Burton Batman, he kills people for fun. He, he definitely does not give a shit. Um, the Schumacher Batman, I'm pretty sure kills people. I, I, I haven't got a citation on top of my head, but what I was going to say is that a lot of people say that none of those guys are Batman. They'll say that the only actor yeah. really Batman is the animated one um because he sticks to the no kill sort of stuff and the, if you're going to deal with batman killing someone you have to be very careful very careful and i'm totally on board with that mm -hmm. and i feel like you could have assumed that's what zach was talking about but i'm sorry i've seen zach execute they, his ideas He's not yeah it's like yeah exactly exactly um yeah, if that's your cardinal rule, then if you do have to break it, it should be for very, very exceptional circumstances. And it should be and handle very it with meaningful. care. Yeah. Uh, Gunner says, it was noticeable that the Reef Tribe in Avatar 2 pieced out in the middle of the battle for no reason, so that was something that should be added back in. There's so much about Avatar 2 that makes no fucking sense. I hate that mm -hmm. movie. Cannon Falderall. Can we lock these fools in a cage match and sell PPV tickets? Coming this summer, Zack Snyder versus Stink Baby Inc. No matter who wins, storytelling loses. <laughs> I mean, I, I would I would probably think Zack would win. <laughs> Just by virtue of the fact that he's probably like done a bit of like physical well, activity not, in his life. They're not doing films or anything, right? Well, it was the idea that they were going to fight him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in an actual cage match, I think. I think Zack could take them. Well, it depends how many there are. They might dogpile him. True, yeah. The Devious Revance or Revanite says, it's my 29th birthday on Sunday, uh, same as the glorious Chuck Norris. Hopefully it's better than my 28th. It was spent on set for a movie with Russell Crowe in a morgue. <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck? 
Uh, yeah, well, happy birthday, man. That is today. Yeah. Sebastian Howard says, Sweet Baby Inc. worked on God of War Ragnarok and it was woke trash. Synthetic Man was right the entire time. Oh, I wonder if that's one of Synthetic Man's fans. <laughs> he didn't even mention Sweet Baby Inc. in his review. What are yep. you talking about? Like, God, it's so NPC level, like, marching orders shit. You have no idea yep. what you're talking about. The, we... What's funny is the majority of our coverage of him was about how bad he is as a game reviewer, like irrelevant of any meta or cultural things. He just he wasn't even paying attention. He didn't know what was going on in the game. He advocated that you're an idiot if you listen to the dialogue. Why would I want to review the story from someone who hates dialogue? You know what I mean? It's like, what's the yeah. fucking point? It's um, oh, it's so funny. Like, <laughs> like uh... make an argument. Maybe we can start there. Yeah, uh, Mufisto. I think Ackman needs to apologize to Babyface from the Starfield pronoun debacle. Thoughts? Uh, yeah, I agree. I don't think he ever will, but there you go. Uh, Silent Evil says, Since you're here, Mr. H, just want to say I recently rewatched your retro video review on the first Silent Hill movie. Mm, interesting thoughts there. All right, nice one. Uh, Patrick Mulligan, we need Drinker and Mola to review David Lynch's Dune, the 2000 sci fi miniseries, and its sequel, mm. 2003's Children of Dune, starring James McAvoy. I, I, I happily watch the David Lynch movie with you. I think there's a lot we can pick apart there. I think um, we got we got a huge backlog of things we've already planned to watch now, haven't we? So maybe, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Bo says, thank you for all your work. As a fan and longtime listener of both the Actman and Critical Drinker universes, this is the worst way I could have ever imagined a crossover, lol. I mean, I don't think he had anything to say to me, so <laughs> I'm not yeah. really involved in this one. Uh, Hunter says, Hey Moller, Ghost of Tsushima is being released on PC. Would you consider playing it? Also, Birdemic EFAP, please. Uh, pretty much yes to both of those. I can see both of those happening. Not sure cool. when, though. Uh, Common Sense says, Woke 1. Extremes will fade while the rest is normalized. We already use less extreme offerings. House of Usher as normal. Been happening since the 60s. Woke never truly fails. It just becomes normal. Mission accomplished. I mean... House of Usher? Wait. Like, is that woke? They said House of Usher was woke? I mean, I think that's what they're using here is like a, a maybe an example of something that's woke, but it's like seen as normal because the landscape is shifted? I'm assuming that's what they're trying to say. Um, I guess I just I need definitions and references. I don't, I'm not sure if they're saying what they're saying or not. <laughs> I'm getting lost. Because House of Usher had... Um... The female characters were not exactly held on pedestals in that one. No. Um, Marine Lad says, Drinker saw the Marvels. Wasn't bad, wasn't too terrible, but not up there with peak Infinity War or Dark Knight. Would you do a Drinker second chances segment? What, on the Marvels? I don't think so, man. <laughs> <laughs> that, that movie's had all the chances it's going to get from me. It was terrible. <laughs> Could you imagine if I did like a re review of it and been like, oh my god, like I've really revised my opinion of this film. I think it was once a I saw, you know, the extended cut. Oh, just brilliant. Once I th once I thought about how hard people worked on this. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> I just loved it. Uh Gunnar says, uh, imagining filming Schindler's List with a Californian demographic, the camp guards would be as diverse as Gemini AI. <laughs> Indeed. Um Nostalgia for Days says, It's my birthday and like some words of wisdom because I'm super drunk and depressed. In a month's time, I got arrested during a welfare check. My girlfriend left me and took all of our pets to a shelter. Someone broke into my car and my mom's cancer came back. Uh, in a month's time. So you're you're preemptively depressed, I guess. Try mm -hmm. not to make that stuff happen then, I suppose. Um, yeah, then you won't get depressed. That's my words of wisdom. Uh, Superfly says, you guys, you totally got to watch Christmas Eve with Patrick Stewart. It's terrible and bad. Okay. Um, Solidoji's Deep State Center says, I knew it was coming, but it's still surprising to hear that Rooster Teeth is also shutting down. The unfortunate lesson of what happens when you sell your successful business to the whims of Warner Brothers for short-term funding. I know so, so many of these like ventures have gone under. Rupert says, I don't understand it when they say Something like fewer hours and fewer shows equals increased quality. When they used to make great shows that had 20 episodes that were an hour long, now you can't even do eight. Yeah, I know it's um, it's a bizarre metric, but I think they have to cover themselves somehow. And just this idea that like we're going to prioritize quality over quantity just plays well. It's easy for people to understand, and it just seems like a good excuse. Uh 
Lang like games says, tell Moller about how Vigo broke his toe on set. I mean, <laughs> you know, I'm not sure if Moller knows about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Doug Smoog says, with all of the books Frank Herbert has written, do you think this is the start of something really special in cinema? I've seen Dune 2 Part, uh, part 2 twice, uh, and it's one of the best movies I've ever seen. Well, I mean, good on you, man. Um, I don't know if the Dune saga itself is going to be the start of something special, but I hope that we're going to see a, uh, a resurgence of sci-fi, like intelligent sci-fi. Uh, that would be nice. Yeah. I'd like that. John Ocletree says, Drinker, you need to apologize and do better for not liking Chronicles of Riddick. I can't help it. I just thought it was a bit shit compared to the first <laughs> movie. And it was just trying to it was trying to morph itself into a completely different genre because Vin Diesel had a bit of a an inkling that he wanted to do it. That's all it was. It's weird. <clears throat> uh, Jay Fraser, hail gents, RIP Rooster Teeth, and good riddance. <laughs> yeah. Where to wander says, first keep up the good work, everyone. Second, put out a new video, Mauler. Third, <laughs> Bad Batch is not high entertainment, but Clone Wars fans will appreciate it. <laughs> Will it was they? it was wild what you were telling me about Bad Batch and all the things it tries to tie up and incorporate like damn man for I a little animated kids show yeah did not see Palpatine coming in and force like we may very well have the season end with setting up Palpatine clones or Snoke hmm. you just don't expect that but I guess you know a lot of plot points did happen in some of the animated shows that. I mean, I, I was trying to talk to, a, uh, I think, Ryan about this, how isn't it crazy that Ahsoka's been around for like a decade or so, or close to it, whatever. Meanwhile, mainstream, most people have no idea that she's even a Star Wars character. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Like, ask the average person in the street, like, who's Luke Skywalker or Han Solo or whatever? They'll probably tell you. Who's Ahsoka? you be like, what the fuck's wrong with you? What is this weird <laughs> word that you're saying? And then she comes in that fucking show, of which no, no way near enough people saw anyway. But you just be like, "What is this?" Yeah, it's like, "Oh yeah, her teacher was adequate." You're like, "What do you mean, her teacher? Did I miss a whole movie? You're like, what's going on?" <laughs> uh, OMG puppies says Brianna Wu is trans and she's in that crowd with Sarkeesian, but she's more rational than one might expect. I, I know very little about Brianna Wu actually compared That's to the really others. Uh, Ratey Dem says ever seen Find Me Guilty with the director of 12 Angry Men, Sidney Lumet and Vin Diesel. Uh, before 12 movies of family, he, he actually cared to try something different. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> so he's playing like a mob boss in that, I think. And apparently he got a lot of praise for his performance in it. So, hmm. good on him. Haven't seen it, but intrigued. Uh, not fan says, Hail Drinker, going to see Dune Part 2 again this weekend. Such a fun, epic movie. It's great to enjoy a movie in theatres again. I'm going to go read Berserk now. Good on you, mate. Thank you. Um, Jay Fraser, Alan Wake 2 is a game story I have been waiting for for 13 years. Then all my excitement was snuffed out as I watched Mauler stream in absolute horror. There's not many games I will outright stop playing because I just cannot stand how badly written they are. Yep. It was difficult. Uh, Metallica fan says, JJ Star Trek Kelvin verse is terrible. Agreed 100%. Uh, Philip H says, IMDB says, JJ has got 62 upcoming projects. What the fuck? 62. Are they just going to be like... Yeah, I was going to say, is he like an associate producer or something where he's got no actual involvement? Um, Jay Fraser says, Muller, I'm sorry to hear about you being pulled into the Act Man uh, versus As drama. It looks like he was doing a YMS on another of your YouTube friends. I mean... Uh... <laughs> like I, I was just... Uh, I was. My goal was just to get, uh, get him talking, you know? Yep. No, I think fair play. Can't, can't fault you. Um, Where to Wander says, question for you all. If you could hire any director or writer for a Star Wars movie, who would they be? I'm going to keep hiring J.J. Abrams and just keep forcing him to make Star Wars movies. It's <laughs> just to torment him. <laughs> make him make a Jar Jar movie. Yeah. Um, Denise Villeneuve would be an interesting one for a Star Wars movie, actually. I'd be curious to see how how slow and epic it would be. <laughs> Star Wars is so mangled. I would like happily see Tarantino do it. See what he'd do. Sure, yeah. Throw anyone in. The Captain's Log says, Evening gents, do you think Dune will change Hollywood perception into actuality? Uh, sorry, into actually caring about the source or just more of the same? I uh, know Dune isn't perfect. So, um, I don't think it's so much about the source as the 
the format of the movie that you're making here, um, this is a hard sci-fi movie that's very serious, very slow, very detailed, very rich in terms of world building, and probably asks quite a lot of its audience, which is not something we're used to from like $200 million movies these days. So hopefully that's the change that it makes. It encourages them to treat their audience with a bit more respect. That's what I'd like to see. Um Jay Fraser, Mr. H on the podcast of the Lotus Eaters. It was a surprise to be sure, but a welcome one. Um, Harry Robinson would, would make an interesting guest. Okay. Uh, Thomas Bergman, heard about the new Fallout card set for Magic the Gathering. Show me that the new Fallout show will suck without telling me it will suck. Wizards of the Coast and Bethesda, marriage made in hell. Yeah, uh, I know Wizards of the Coast is apparently like super progressive. Loom says, unpopular opinion, Star Trek V is a great and ambitious movie, better than 4 and 1. Well, Ooh. funny you should say that, because Mauler and I are going to be watching it pretty soon. So we'll give you our yeah. thoughts then. Joshua Bibby says, Samuel L. Jackson's character from The Long Kiss Goodnight should have been the Nick Fury backstory. Yeah, I fucking loved his character. He was amazing. Um, uh, what's the new one? Yeah, Chris Nicholson. The path of Rooster Teeth mirrors the path of DEI films. First, it's cool since a group that isn't typically catered to gets stuff for them. Suddenly, it's mainstream. Money gets involved. It becomes soulless and viewers leave. Yep, that's pretty much the, the path a lot of these companies take. Cole Marshall says, have you or Mahler seen Don't Look Up? If so, what are your thoughts? I avoided I it like the plague. It's a weird movie. Um, it's taking shots all over the place, like in terms of social commentary. Some of it I even found funny, and then some of it was like absolutely cringeworthy. Um, I, I I struggled to fully remember what I thought about it, but I remember thinking I wouldn't mind uh, watching it with Rags and Fringy just to talk about what the movie did in both a bad and good way, I guess. Hmm. Mixed bag, you know. Like, um, but I I mean, you can tell I ain't recommending it. Yeah. Uh... Solid OG's Deep State Center says, I second the recommendation on watching Space King. You don't have to know 40K to enjoy it. It has old school internet humor everyone's going to enjoy, and it's made by people who obviously love the topic. All right, good recommendation. Uh, Jay Fraser, do you think George Lucas sold Lucasfilm too soon? I believe this is due in part to the rise of streaming services shortly after 2012. Perhaps George should have made an exclusive deal with Netflix. I just think it was the the negative reaction to pretty much everything he'd put out over the past yeah. 10 years. He was just everything, done. Was... It just, yeah, he just didn't want to go through it again. Uh, nobody likes to think of themselves as the killer of the thing that they made that everyone loved. Even though we've got a few examples of those at this point. But he just let, he let someone else kill it instead. I only made yeah. a few billion in the process, so fair play to him. Uh, Dan the Jedi says, Drinker, you rock. You got me into Mauler and Gary and the rest. Love you, Disparu. Mauler, uh, what do you feel about the Dawn storyline in Buffy Season 5? It dawned on me that it's the girl who is the key to everything, but actually done well. It's surprising how many fucking tropes in Buffy like resurrection or time travel or turning a strict bad guy into a good guy or uh, having a hero kill a bunch of people. Like The amount of things they do in Buffy and Angel that are just writing no-nos, but they do them really well is insane. As for that one, um, we're talking about a character who is a literal in-universe retcon. She isn't doesn't exist and then does, and the whole universe's writing is rewritten to account for her, which, again, would never recommend any aspiring writer to try and tackle that. I'd be like, that's going to be pretty fucking hard, but I think they nailed it. And uh, I think it's really good for season five, and it's thematic value being that of about like sacrifice and... The difficulties of family and what it means to have a family, what what uh, dawn means to Buffy and stuff. Yes, I I, I like it. Noise and yeah, thank you. I'm glad I could be a gateway drug to you and Mauler and Gary and everyone else. Uh, yeah, and Silent Evil says another little something to go out, mates. Keep up the good work. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Uh, that was the last of it. That was the last of the super chats. Well, well. thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being so generous as always, and hopefully we've answered your questions. And yeah. that, I think, is all we've got for now. Um, I'm actually going to duck out in a minute from this recording, and I'm going to go on to um, Outcast Creative to talk about Masters of the Air. So, awesome. unfortunately, yeah, America, 
So yeah. I have to leave fairly quickly. But yeah, thank you guys. Uh, appreciate it. And the next time I see you, we'll either be on a live stream doing um, a bit of Final Fantasy VII playthrough or it'll be on Open Bar. Either way, I will catch you later. And that's all we've got. So go away now. Bye.